The move we're seeing in crude prices, how sustainable is this? Well, good morning, uh, Morgan. I think uh, the current prices are, haven't moved that much. They've moved a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think the markets are pretty well saturated with supply. So we have to wait and see how the situation unfolds. But currently, I, I wouldn't say that we've had a very strong uh, move. It's, it's been a, a fair move, a couple of dollars, three dollars. Uh, but let's, let's see what happens next. In terms of the potential for what happens next, um, and what that could mean in terms of the energy market. IHS market uh, just came out with a note a little while ago, and, and they say that uh, the absence of Soleimani will also risk Iran becoming far less subtle in its actions, raising the risk of a miscalculation leading to an all-out war. How high is the risk that a counter-reaction from Iran now uh, could be on oil fields uh, or other assets uh, related to oil in the region? Uh, I believe the problem is really between the U.S. and Iran at this point. It's not about the oil fields or the other countries in the Gulf. I think uh, Iran has been overplaying its hand. Uh, certainly the attempts to enter the U.S. embassy in Iraq uh, and other uh, attacks on U.S. Uh, military in Iraq. Uh, this is a problem between the U.S. and the Iranians. I don't think that they would want to do anything with the other countries in the region, that, that wouldn't advance or affect their, their issue with the U.S. So I think the focus will be on the U.S. And Sasad, given that Iran has been working so hard to gain influence in Iraq, and, and given what you just said about um, probably the, the, the likelihood that they won't uh, put oil assets at risk, do you think that they're then unlikely uh, to damage any of Iraq's oil infrastructure in response to this? Yes, uh, I, I doubt very much that they will go after Iraqi installations as well, because at the end of the day, Iraq has been a very close supporter of the Iranian regime. So uh, that would not do them any good. Uh, I believe the situation now is really one of the Iranians needing to confront the reality that their foreign policy is not working. Uh, Soleimani was a problem. He was a, a very extreme element in the Iranian uh, leadership. Uh, there may be others like him, but I think this is the opportunity for the moderates in Iran to try to calm down the events and to try to pull back some of this interference that they're having with other countries. Iraq is their ally. I don't believe that they want to alienate Iraq. Yeah, that's such a key point, especially given the fact that within the country itself, I mean, we've seen this political and social unrest uh, within Iran, thanks to sanctions, thanks to the impact on the economy, protests, de deadly reactions to it. How likely do you think that longer term this could actually lead to more productive negotiations between the U.S. and Iran? Uh, Iran has a very serious uh, economic problem. They have domestic unrest. They have issues with uh, their neighbors. Uh, there's hardly any country in the world that wants to deal with the current re leadership. So uh, if, if they look at their own outlook for the long term, they do need to negotiate. Uh, they do need to uh, climb back down from the confrontational approach they've been taking. If they don't, their situation is just going to get worse domestically. And the Iranian people are already showing that they're not really very happy with this regime. So, uh, so in the long term, they have to uh, moderate their, uh, their approach. Uh, whether they will do it now is unlikely, because now they feel they have to show some kind of a reaction. Hopefully, it will be a very moderate one. So, not, as we look at this uh, sharp but fairly contained reaction in the oil markets to today's news, um, there's some commentary that, of course, uh, Saudi Arabia has spare capacity, could increase production if, uh, in fact, needed. How is that calculus made? Uh, and what price level do you think uh, that supply response might come from? I don't believe there has been a call on Saudi Arabia to do anything, to add any production or any additional capacity. The spare capacity is definitely there. Uh, has been demonstrated um, many times. The, the markets are very steady. Uh, supply is, is more than adequate. The long term, uh, I believe Iran uh, will not have an opportunity to come back into the export uh, markets. Uh, the way they're going, their production will remain domestic. Uh, the same thing applies to other countries. Uh, the recent OPEC meeting 
certainly underline the need to be very prudent in terms of supply. So prices are, are probably going to be quite stable. Supply is going to be quite uh, abundant. By year-end 2020, I think there will be a stronger market. But there's no shortage of supply, that's for sure. So, Sadad, do you see economic risk for U.S. interests in the region right now because of this or no? No, absolutely not. Uh, the U.S. interests uh, have not been in Iran or in Iraq. They've been in the, all the other countries uh, that are major producers, major consumers of U.S. exports. And I think the U.S. has shown its hand uh, now that it is not going to tolerate any more uh, interference by the Iranians in uh, the rest of the region. So, if anything, I would say it's probably strengthened the relationships between the U.S. and the other countries. Iran was a foregone conclusion. Uh, Iraq has been so unstable that it wasn't much of a market. And, you know, the same with Syria and others. So uh, as far as U.S. interests, I think they're very well uh, protected as it stands. Now, Sadat, I know you're an oil guy, but given the fact that energy and security and defense are so uh, interlinked, interconnected, I wonder if you think this is going to increase demand for weapon systems, for defenses, uh, especially if you look at not just these strikes over the last uh, couple of days, but also the attacks we saw on Aramco uh, just a few months ago. I think uh, what we are seeing is that the U.S. has shifted its foreign policy in the region, uh, at least that's how I read it, uh, from one of a passive observer and a continuous kind of warnings to one of a more active, uh, proactive perhaps, uh, player. Uh, this means that the U.S. has far more resources and military capabilities than any of the countries in the region, and it, it won't call on the countries locally to, to uh, probably invest any more than they have done already. It will call on the U.S. to deploy its forces and make them more visible, and hopefully that will deter any further activities, uh, aggressive activities out of regimes like the Iranians or the uh, militias that they have in Iraq.